And as I've been like looking into you, researching this topic of joy for this week, um, our worship, the way we sing to God is really, it's, it's an expression of our joy. It's, it's all about joy. Like having joy is worship. And that's why we sing. That's really what this verse is saying. So this morning, um, we just want to be reflecting on that, reflecting on what we have to to be joyous about, and um, just knowing that our rejoicing is our expression of our love for for God. And um, you're going to notice that there's less people around this week. Um, leading you <laughs> than there normally are. Um, Phil hurt his back yesterday, and he is sick, um, like, feeling really dizzy, um, and he's not sure what it is. He doesn't know um, what it is, but just to, to keep um, things as safe as possible, he's just not here this morning. Um, so we're missing him. Um, yeah, we don't have any other musicians around, so it's just me. It's just us singing some Christmas carols this morning. So I hope that you'll sing along with me, and that'll be great. That'll be amazing. And I think that this service could be a really special thing if we um, if we all focus on expressing our joy this morning. Um, so that's what we're going with. Um, just looking at the joy that comes in the morning, even after all the, the sorrow and the pain. So we're going to sing some Christmas carols. This is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. I hope you join me.
week one, spread hope to our small businesses in Oakland. Week two. Week three, help bring the joy of Christmas to families of Oak Lawn by helping us gather Christmas presents. Week four, share love with others. Take it, make it, and then give it. Finally, join us Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. as we come together to celebrate the light of the world. And be sure to dress for the weather. Good morning, Alive Church. We are fully in our Advent season, and we want you to be able to be a part of the action. We've still had some questions about the Advent challenges, so I wanted to take a moment to go ahead and go over those with you. Even though we are now entering our week of joy, and we've passed the week of peace and the week of hope, you still have a chance to be a part of that and still contribute. So let's review. Week one, we celebrated hope and lit the candle of hope. And what is the action step? The action step that you can take part of is go ahead to Simple Give. You could go to our website, click on Give, and then that will launch you into Simple Give. There'll be a drop-down menu. Click on the drop-down menu, Hope. And what we'll do is we are going to take those funds and purchase gift certificates for small businesses to give them hope that they will not just survive during the season, but thrive. Week two was peace. We lit the candle of peace. And the challenge for that week is to join us by helping to provide a coffee break for our area educators. So what is your action step for that? Again, go to Simple Give, use the drop down menu item, peace, coffee break, and go ahead and donate there. And that will help fund us going to our local schools and providing coffee and bagel treat for them as they come into work in the morning. We'll be outside with the table set up and share a moment of peace with them as they start their work day. Week three, we're kicking off joy. That's this week. And what we're doing with joy, what is your action step? Again, go to Simple Give and you can click on the drop-down menu, Joy Christmas Families, Christmas Gifts, and what we're going to do is sponsor nine families in the area that are in need, and we're going to help make their Christmas awesome. The other step that you can do related to Joy is you can come in and pick an ornament off of the tree here in the lobby, and you can shop specifically for those items for those children and bring them back to the church by this Wednesday morning so that we have time to prepare everything, shop for any extras, and then deliver them to the families by the end of the week. Next week, we're celebrating love. And what is the action step related to love? Well, first, we are going to be gathering gift baskets similar to what we did for our families for Thanksgiving. Our children's ministry students, as well as our youth students, all received a basket to their family of activities during Thanksgiving. Well, we're doing that again with a little bit of a twist. So we are delivering items that we have come to know were associated with our community Christmas event. Obviously, during these times, it would not be smart to have that event, so we're going to bring that event to you and your families. We'll be delivering the items that were special to you that were related to that event. We'll do the best that we can to make it fun and exciting for you. We'll also be providing some fun activities in there and a treat that you can make and then bake or create and give to your neighbor to share love with them during this season. That is the action step for love. Finally, we'll be celebrating light. And what is your action step for light? Please join us outside for our Christmas Eve candlelight service, 6 p.m. We're gonna do it Charlie Brown style. So please join us, that's your action step, to share the light with us. We hope that you'll make it Christmas Eve, 6 p.m. This week, we're kicking off joy. And for more on that, I'm gonna go ahead and take a minute to share that with you, let you know why what we're doing related to joy and that challenge is so near and dear to my heart. And I'm gonna give a little clue. Kids, I want you to pay attention, especially the kiddos that are sitting there in the seats right now. 
in church. B7 is super important to my story. And if you can tell me after church, find me in the lobby or in the worship space, if you can tell me what does B7 mean, what was that all about, I have a special treat for you that I'll give you. So let's go ahead and take a look. For me, um, I think happiness and joy get confused a lot of times. I think a lot of people think they're synonyms, but they're actually quite different. If you're happy, it's dictated by your circumstances. So what is going on around you dictates whether you're happy or not. But joy, joy is felt amidst storms, amidst happy times. Um, joy is just a peaceful feeling of content no matter what's going on around you. This week is extra special because of B7. B7 always rings in my mind because um, I was one of the families when I was younger that would receive these gifts. And I say B7 because one year we received all of our gifts in a big laundry basket um, and on the side it was labeled B7. So we were family B7. And um, just being, um, experiencing and knowing such lack in all forms um, growing up, th what B7 meant to me and what, um, what that brought to our family, especially my siblings, uh, I'm just eternally grateful. And what that means as I roll back the tape and look at my walk um, towards Christ and walk with Christ, uh, B7 just means a lot. So I'm just excited to be able to be a part of sharing that type of love and joy with families that we don't even know. people that I didn't even know share abundance with me. And it was physical abundance, tangible abundance with gifts. But these were people that I didn't know and they had never met me. Like, why should they care about me? Why should they, why should they care about what I want and what I need? You know, I mean, in those baskets that we would receive was our needs and our wants. And for me, it was like a little window that I couldn't have possibly understood as a child. But I know that it was a seed that was planted in me that, one, I only knew lack. And now to introduce me to abundance, I knew what I could hope for and dream for and, and chase after. and. Um, but the bigger picture for me was that I started to understand what it might be like to have someone that I've never seen their face, but they love me and care for me, for my needs, my wants, and wants to shower abundance on me. And that is so synonymous to how God feels about us that I'm just so excited to be able to be a part of sharing a tiny window of that to these kids. And, and who knows what they'll be? Who knows what they'll do with that? Maybe they'll be 40 and doing ministry. My name is Jelly Roll. I'm a blues player, 
And I have an Advent message for all you cats out there. It goes, it goes a little like this. Woke up this morning, feeling so blue. Then I thought of Jesus, and I was filled with joy. I got no blue. From my head down to my shoes. Cause that baby Jesus, he stole away my blues. Well, I can't believe no room in the inn. The Savior's bed was made out of hay. hay. I do believe. From my head down to my shoes. Well, God Almighty, He's loving you and me. This song might not rhyme. In fact, it's a little out of time. But that baby Jesus came right on time. I do believe. From my head down to my shoes. Well, that baby Jesus will steal away your blues. You know, friends, we live in a time when all you gotta do is look around a little bit and poof, your joy is stolen away. But you know, when you focus on Jesus, maybe this week, think about the story of his birth, the manger, Joseph, Mary. Think about it real good. You know what? Joy will come back. All right, this is Jelly Roll. Bye, peace, love. top that. I don't know why Jelly Roll, the blues player, is not here accompanying me, but anyway, let's sing uh, Joy to the World together.
desires in our, our own will, Lord, and we just, we just want to look to you. You deserve the praise for the good things in our lives. For the joy you've given us, Lord, we just want to return that to you. Traditional English carols, songs including Joy for the World. 
It's a tough time for me. I found myself wanting to buy something to fill that hole in my heart, that emptiness I felt. I am here to tell you it did not work. One day I found myself on the floor in my very small walk-in closet, sobbing. And at that point is when I said, Lord, it's you and me. And as a result of that, my relationship with Jesus Christ has deepened, it strengthened, and joy returned to my life. See, of all the joys that we can have in our life, the one that really is truly, truly significant and most important is the source of God. If he is your source of joy, it will be lasting. Baptism is an example of that. If you have been baptized, do you remember the joy that you felt? Your relationship differed from the moment you were baptized, from the moments before baptism. I looked up joy in my, my Nelson Illustrated Dictionary of the Bible, and this is what it said about joy. It is a positive attitude or pleasant emotion. Delight. But the joy which the people of God should have is holy and pure. This joy rises above circumstances and focuses on the very character of God. This kind of joy is distinct from mere happiness. Joy like this is possible even in the midst of sorrow, even in the midst of whatever trial or challenge you're facing. There are many stories of joy in our Bible. I will pick on two, if you will. One is Zechariah and Elizabeth. In their very old age, they had a baby. You see, they both came from the priestly line of Aaron, who was Moses' brother. An angel is speaking to Zechariah in Luke chapter 1, verse 14. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. We know John better as John the Baptist. In time, he would make way for the Lord. And now we have Mary and Joseph. They also are expecting a baby. And they too were visited by angels. Each of them. Initially fear. But then it turned to joy. Mary went to visit Elizabeth. And while they were both with child, in Luke 141, it says, And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And a few verses later, we find Mary's song, in Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. It begins like this. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. I encourage you to read this in its entirety sometime this week. If you got a handout of the, of the Bible passages, it's on there. Joy, the birth of Jesus. Now before I start reading Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20, you really need to know what's going on. You see, Mary and Joseph are traveling and have traveled a ways to get to Bethlehem. And why were they going? Because of the census. They had to go to Bethlehem because Joseph is in the line of David, the house of David, and therefore had to register in Bethlehem. And that way, while they were there, Mary gives birth to a son in a stable in Bethlehem and lies in a manger among animals. Let's begin reading, and today I'm going to read from the English Standard Version. Let's begin with chapter 2, verse 8. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, 
I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Our second point is good news of great joy. But once again we see some fear before the joy. We also see an angel reassuring the shepherds. Don't be afraid. For behold, I have good news of great joy. So the angel announces the birth of the Savior to the shepherds. Christ the Lord is the anointed one. Christ is a, a Greek word for the Hebrew word Messiah. So Messiah is the Christ who was born in Bethlehem. Notice the angels announced this Savior's birth, the Messiah's birth, the shepherds. The Messiah, born a baby, a human baby. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 9, 6, For to us a child is born, to us a son shall be given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let's continue in verse 12. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. These descriptors would help the shepherds find this baby. The Messiah wrapped in swaddling clothes. Lying in a manger, not a crib, not a bassinet, not a cradle, a manger with straw. The Israelites weren't looking for a baby to be their Messiah. Some of the Israelites were looking for a mighty warrior who would defeat the Roman Empire. But we have the Messiah as a baby. What a difference. Notice also that the shepherds did not disbelieve the angel. They didn't question the angel. They believed him. And because the city of David is relatively small, they would have a fairly easy time of finding a baby that's in a manger. So let's continue reading 13 and 14. And suddenly there was an angel, a with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. A multitude, a vast number, thousands of angels. Paul writes in Philippians 2 7. That God came to earth taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. In the likeness of men sounds like the image of man. Genesis 1.27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. So God created man and woman in his image. And now he is being born a baby in the image of man. Did you understand that? Uh huh. God is all powerful and he's worthy of our praise. According to my New Living Translation Study Bible, it says the phrase, glory to God in the highest, is known really by. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Part of many songs. It's a Latin translation. As we were singing earlier, did you pay attention to the words of the text that we were singing? No. I was a choir member before Don and I met in my previous church. And our choir director impressed upon us the importance of not only singing 
the text, but reading it and taking it in. I really encourage you to do that when we sing our Christmas carols and all the Christian songs. Let's continue with verses 15 and 16. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Notice the shepherds didn't waste any time. They were filled with excitement and joy. They wanted to go see what the angel just referred to them. But they already knew from the Lord. It wasn't from the angel. It was from the Lord. They wanted to see that for themselves. And not only did they hurry, but they actually find them. Imagine that great joy. That great joy. Can you imagine yourself going and finding this baby lying in a manger? Let's finish our story. Verses 17 through 20. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. My third point is share the faith. Share the joy. You see, the shepherds had faith. They believed. And they were sharing the joy by telling the story over and over. In one of my translations, it said, to everyone. And everyone who heard were astonished and amazed. Mary held those memories in her heart. She would reflect on them. Often, probably. For you see, her son belonged to God. He was God's son. The Messiah. The Christ. The shepherds' lives would have been forever changed because of their experience. How about our lives? Are we forever changed? Because of the birth of Jesus? Do we share the joy with everyone? Do we share the joy at all? When you think about Christmas, what goes through your mind? Christmas carols? Advent services? Candlelight services? How about family get-togethers? How about decorating your Christmas tree? Sending out Christmas cards, hanging up our stockings, baking, decorating cookies. How about reading the night before Christmas? A lot of families do that every year. I wonder what the original night before Christmas was really like. The shepherds were probably in their fields guarding their flocks like they usually do. People were traveling because of the census. Stars and the moon, still up there. The night before Christmas takes on a different meaning. So when you think about the first Christmas and baby Jesus, the Messiah, lying in the manger, what goes through your mind? You see, Jesus Christ, the baby, is the anointed one. He is sent to deliver his people. And we all need a deliverer. We all need to be delivered because we are all sinners. All sinners. Every single one of us. So we all need a savior. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift, free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, we need a savior. We need the Messiah. Because our sins... We deserve death. But through him, we receive the gift of salvation and eternal life. Through him, we find joy. 
While in prison, Paul wrote in Philippians 4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Paul was returning to a deep commitment to God based on a trusting relationship with him. It's not the happiness kind of joy. He's not talking about that. It's much deeper. It's not based on our circumstances. He was in prison, and he's telling us to be joyful, to rejoice. So even in this weary world, it is easy, very easy for us to get discouraged because of the events, the challenges of our world. But I am here to tell you, instead, let the Holy Spirit work in you. Jesus is speaking to his disciples in John 15, 9 through 11. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Being obedient to God is about love and joy. Jesus showed great joy in being obedient to his Father, even in the midst of oppression, even in the midst of going to the cross on our behalf. And we can have joy in being obedient also. If we keep the three commands I just read about, our joy can be complete. Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Once again, we see that joy is not dependent on our circumstances. Paul is encouraging that early church to follow those three commands. And in so doing, He's encouraging us to do that as well. It's not just about joy, though. It's about being grateful and thankful to God in all circumstances, not for all circumstances. There is a big difference between in and for circumstances. So in conclusion, finding joy through Jesus, a weary world can rejoice. Through Jesus Christ the Lord, we can find joy. Three points today. Situational joy. Those are the events that bring joy, happiness, joy-filled memories. Secondly, good news of great joy. Our Messiah, Christ the Lord, brings joy to all people. He brings us the free gift of salvation and eternal life. And number three, share the joy. Share with others the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ. So sometime this week, I have a couple things for you to do. Most of you, maybe all of you, got a little sheet of paper when you, when you walked in. On the front of it, there's a place for you to reflect on your situational joy. There's also a, a part of that about the good news of great joy. Reflect on that, jot some things down, or at least look at them and think about them. And on the back side, what does Christmas mean to you? That's all like one part. The second part is, I invite you to share the joy of Jesus Christ with at least one person this next week. At least one person. I think you can all do that. A weary world rejoices, finding joy. Rejoice, Jesus is coming, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for sending us your Son, Jesus, the Messiah, the Lord, wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. At a time when so many of us are hurting, may we turn to you. Situational joy, good news of great joy, and sharing the joy all shape our lives, Lord. Sometimes our circumstances bring joy to our lives, and yet that joy is different than the joy we receive from you. Shepherds were considered lowly people at the time of Jesus' birth, and yet you chose 
to announce the arrival of our Messiah, our Savior, to the shepherd's birth. The good news the angel brought to them changed their lives forever as they set out to find the baby lying in the manger. Then the shepherds shared the joy with everyone as they retold the story of what happened. Situational joy became great joy, resulting in the shepherds sharing the joy of the good news. Lord, we too want to find joy that only can come from you. May the Holy Spirit work in each one of our lives so that we may receive the joy of finding you lying in the manger this Advent Christmas season. Maybe we will be learning and willing to share your story with others. Although the circumstances in which we live are influenced by the things in this world, help us to remember we live in this world, but we are not of this world. And we can rely on you, never changing in this ever-changing world. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. May we find joy in you this Advent season. I ask that you watch over those here today, those who will may watch later, and all their families, Lord, keeping them safe from all harm and danger as we live within your will for our lives. I want to raise up Pastor Phil this morning. May you lay your healing hand upon him and restore his, his health. May you relieve the pain that he is feeling. You are the great physician, Lord. And we look for the day that Pastor Phil will walk back through these doors with the energetic enthusiasm and the joyfulness that he brings. I pray that our weary world rejoices finding joy and spreading joy. And I pray this all in Jesus' most precious name. And all God's children said, Amen. Now let's join the singing, O Come, O Come, Amen. So, so as we're talking about, we're talking about situational, joy, situational joy, and what that can mean, what that can mean there's a lot of situational things that come up in our lives that get in the way of our joy, get in the way of our joy feel like they're going to steal our joy, and keep us from being able to be fully alive, be fully alive in the joy, the fullness of joy that Christ wants to fill us with. So before we go today, so before we go today, um, really just want this to be a moment. That if you're like dealing that, with something like that, if there's something in your life that is keeping you from is keeping you from being fully filled with Christ's joy, filled with Christ's joy this morning, we just want you to be able, to come, to, to be able to come up and Erica, if you would, uh, just be available, uh, just, to be available to just to pray with you. Our team, um, our team, we want to pray over you if you're struggling with something like that. So, so as we're singing this last song, as we're singing this last song, we just. Just be reflecting the person, the person joy, in your life, joy in your life, your situation, your situation. If there's something that you want, something that you want us to pray over you for, just come, come on up, just come up here, and we, we and totally we, want to bless you, totally want to bless you, pray, you pray over you for that situation. So I can say, we just invite you to be a part of that. Story.
Shadows put you Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, Thanks for joining us this morning. Have a great week.